Hey there internet, welcome to the Hard on Gear channel where I discuss and review my used and abused knives and gear. And the fixed blade frenzy continues with my first Condor knife. Now I've heard of Condor knives, I've seen them on websites and interviews and, and stores and all that. They've just, it's never been one that's spoken to me, it's never been a knife company that I've checked into yet. But a few weeks ago I got the Mora Garberg, you can check that review out. Very popular bushcraft knife, but not one that I had a lot of interest in getting until I got my hands on one. So during my first wildfire trip of the season, a buddy I got to work with that trip had a Mora Garberg on him, so I got to play around with that. It's it's definitely a step up from the more companions and robust uh, but in that video I based I titled it and kind of provokingly so titled it the uh, best bushcraft knife ever trying to see if anyone had a different opinion as to what might be better than the infamous Moore Garberg the budget guy for knives and tools comes out with another good suggestion uh, I ended up getting the Glock folding shovel here very recently by his suggestion and this was another one that he threw out in the comments of the uh, Mora video here and I gotta say from what I've seen online the few videos I watched of this I ordered one instantly there was one left on amazon.ca this is okay obviously not the way the box is supposed to be open uh, but in there pretty good and then we've got a little condor knife and tool package uh, sticker by the looks of things and condor knife and tool carbon steel will rust yeah so it's carbon steel blade it's just saying you know Take care of your stuff. Don't be so hard on it. Also got these stickers here if anyone's interested. Feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram, Hard on Gear channel, or uh, email channel at gmail.com. If you're a knife channel and you want to get a couple stickers, hit me up for sure and I will hook you up. So we got a pretty thick plastic covering over this uh, very Mora-like plastic sheath. I'm assuming this is some kind of a light polymer or plastic, something like that. Very, very similar to the Gar Garberg in size and the way it sits on the sheath. Uh, full tang carbon steel fixed blade. Ooh, really good retention. So the Garberg's in there, but it's not its not a snap retention. It's very much just in there snugly once it gets to the widest part of that handle. This is, yeah, that's in there. So that's a little bit of a snap to get into place. So right now where it's new, maybe a lanyard would be beneficial just to get a little extra grip on the pinky so you don't accidentally hurt yourself. But who? okay. That's beefier than I expected it to be. And very, very, uh, I don't want to say like an unfinished, but a very uh, rustic, <laughs> very much uh, outdoor rugged sort of a finish to the blade here. I'm not a uh, expert with blade steels and stuff, but that's I guess some kind of patina on this blade already. Somebody help me out here. I know it's very oiled up and a little bit reflective. Some people might look at that and see all these scratches in that and think, huh, what's going on here? And I mean, unless I'm, I'm pretty sure this isn't a used one as it just came in the package, but I'm pretty sure that is some kind of intentional patina on the carbon steel. And you can see that it's a little more of a, a polished finish uh, on the Scandinavian grind portion of the blade, which is super oily because yeah, non stainless, high carbon, super tough gonna want to oil these or else they will stain and get all rusty now this is a $15 more companion knife not terribly worried about it broke the tip off throwing this at trees and stuff uh, or you know cardboard bear targets but anyways regardless coat these with some kind of an oil or they will rust eventually so the Condor Terrasaur 1095 high carbon steel now, 1095 is my favorite bush steel. It's what I'm the most comfortable with. It is the same steel as you're gonna find on knives like the K-Bar USMC. But notice I'm getting a little better at oiling my blades up. That's nice and shiny at the moment. Same stuff as you'll find on the SE Azula 2 and most SE knives other than the S35VN or 420HC versions. And the Topps Mill Spy Elite, which was a recent acquisition and a new recent EDC fixed blade. Uh, favorite of mine, which is going to be getting more and more time on my belt as time goes on and I continue to enjoy this knife. Even when I'm carrying other fixed blades and folders, uh, just because of the versatility of this sheath and how even though it's not a left or right handed setup, I can uh, rotate this and set this up pretty much any point in my body where I can uh, get a pretty good grip on it with left or right hand depending on what I want to do. I've been getting all kinds of time with this on my hip at the versatility that this sheath and clip brings. So 1095, super not stainless, but it gives up that stainless properties in order to be extremely tough, 
extremely uh, durable and edge retentive. Also incredibly easy to sharpen in the field with something like a little plant Lansky Blade Medic, which you know I brag this thing up all the time. Uh, I've sharpened up my uh, Essie Azula 2 and uh, my K-Bar and different knives, uh, more the, gar the Moras for sure, carbon steel Mora companions and stuff. Very good bush knives, very easy to sharpen and touch up in the field. Uh, this is my first time using a 1095 Scandi grind, so I'll be interested to find out uh, how that works on a stone compared to the Stan Sandvix and uh, with the other, I guess, the basic carbon steel, the uh, cheaper carbon steels and stainless steels that the uh, cheaper more companions come with. I can only imagine that 1095 is gonna sharpen up like a dream. So these are gonna get compared a lot. Uh, the Mora Garberg, as I found out here recently, was an answer to the fans of Mora looking for a full tang version of the popular companion knife. And the Pterosaur is very, very similarly created. I don't wanna say it's to be a direct competitor to the Garberg, but eh. Eh, it's pretty damn close, eh? But I can see a lot of benefits of this. A little bit bigger blade, a little bit lighter, definitely lighter, and definitely cheaper. So uh, number one off the bat, about 115, 110, 20 bucks for the uh, Mora Garberg. I think you're, yeah, somewhere's around the $100 mark in the US dollars, and you're gonna be paying anything with like 130 to 140, 50, depending on what kind of, uh, what version you get with what kit. Now the Condor Pterosaur, I picked up off of Amazon.ca for around $60, 59 something maybe, and you can get it in the States off most knife stores for around 40 bucks. So at half or less of the price of the Mora Garberg with basically all the benefits, I mean, similarity wise, I mean, we're talking about basically the same length. Uh, we'll do the weight and the specs here in a minute. Let's check the scale here with the Manix 2. Uh, should be popping up around five ounces. How about uh, 5.3 for the Recon 1? Okay, we're coming up about two ounces light. So I'm gonna add, yeah, two ounces onto this, because I obviously need a flatter surface for the scale at the moment. So 0.2, sorry, 0.2 ounces, what I will add to this. So we're looking at uh, 6.1 ounces for the Garberg, and we're looking at uh, about 4.6 yeah, for the uh, Pterosaur. So not as much, not, eh, it's light enough to definitely make a difference. You're looking at about six ounces versus just over four and a half. So about an ounce and a half lighter in the Pterosaur, half the price, a little bit more blade. Uh, I don't think the Mora is technically a 1095 carbon steel, but I think it's, if it's not called 1095, it's essentially the same composition. For a length, you're looking at a boom, just shy of nine, almost exactly nine inches for both of these, with the blade length almost identical for both. Uh, blade length of four and a quarter with the cutting surface of four inches. And I am looking at the same exact thing basically for the Pterosaur. Same exact blade length, same exact blade grind, same exact blade steel. Blade lengths, same, blade handles the same, full tang fixed blades. The sheaths are almost identical. If you just get the regular Mora Kydex sheath without the survival kit on it, uh, you'll be pretty much the same profile and everything and the weight of the sheath will be very similar. So sheaths almost identical, a little more retention in the uh, pterosaur sheath. The major differences would be that this is more of a drop point. I, ooh, you'd almost, nah, not quite a clip point, not, not a clip point at all. Uh, drop point, I think would be the technical terminology for that one. And this is a bit of a clip point, not much of one, but a bit of a clip point on the Garberg. The blade on this has also got some kind of a crazy coating on it. Whereas the Pterosaur, like I said, looks like it's got a patina purposely done on the main part of the blade, but it is not coated. Which means you have to get some really good fire strikes off of this because this is also a sharpened edge, uh, very much like the Moore Garberg. So you'll be able to scrape some bark and get some sparks if you need to. Again, other than the price, which is substantial and probably the biggest difference between the two, the handle, the ergonomics are different. And the one thing I noticed about the Garberg when I first handled my buddies, it's very girthy in the handle compared to something like a Mora Companion, which I've handled these plenty, and these are very popular, best bang for your buck fixed blade you can find on this planet. Anyone have any arguments for that, please let me know down in the comments. But this is perfect to me. It's really just one of the most well-built handles, and for a cheap plastic and rubber handle, uh, they nailed it. I don't 
know if I like the Garberg handle more, but I definitely feel like I've got a better uh, grip on it. I don't know how to describe it. It's very big around the base of your hand, so if you have a, a big, thick, like a meaty palm, it almost might feel like it's too much. Like, I don't have uh, spindly hands, but I certainly don't have, like, uh, what's a... What's Kurt call his hands from Blade HQ? Oh, ham hands. I don't quite have ham hands, but I do have a thick enough hand that I feel like that's almost too girthy, whereas this is uh, rounded out in the proper way that it feels like it fits into the, the thicker parts of my hand better. Anyways, I guess those two are okay. I, the Condor might feel better with just that it's very simple design very minimal contouring on the handle a little bit near the finger uh near the index and the pinky finger positions but it just it just feels like a knife there's nothing fancy about it except yeah i, I, I think i like the grip better yeah companion's nice but without a doubt I, it feels like a cheaper knife and it's not it's a little bit small these mm, oh, that does feel good though that feels real hefty but it might just be the weight also give me the extra illusion. Uh, the weight, take that knife, uh, the weight is definitely more dispersed evenly or towards the hand, more towards the handle. In the Garberg, the weight is definitely more towards the tip at the on the Condor. And while I say that, it's not actually as unbalanced as I thought towards the tip. Pretty damn center, a uh, little bit towards the handle, but you know, still pretty blade heavy compared to a lot of fixed blades. And the Garberg, well, pff, yeah. Uh, a little further back, very handle heavy. So the Pterosaur, budget guy for knives and tools, uh, solid, solid suggestion. You asked what I think of the knife, or what I thought of it at the time. I had no context to give you. Uh, I'll answer that for you now and say, very, very, very good knife. Very, very much right up my alley. And I could see this uh, being a regular bush carry just as much as the more Garber. Oh yes, and I didn't mention the uh, handle materials of these, that's, uh, uh, poly, uh, polypropylene plastic, again, just different types of plastic. And I'm almost 99% sure, if I do remember correctly from my unboxing, the handle material is Kydex, the same as the sheath, which feels and uh, seems about right. Let's rock some size comparisons. I know we pretty much had these out the whole time and we know that they're basically identical in size and specs and all that. So there's the Garberg and Pterosaur. There's the Companion. Uh, let's make a more a sandwich out of that Pterosaur. Mm, yeah, solid size comparisons. Take these out and put up my EDC fixed blades that I'm typically carrying now, the uh, SE Azula 2 and the Topps Mill Spy Elite. I'll trade these out for the Cold Steel SRK and SK5. And how about the old classic, my probably most used fixed blade ever, the K-Bar USMC 1211. It's actually my very first video I made on this channel was my review of this knife. Feel free to check that one out in the link up in the corner of the screen. And some folder size comparisons. Uh, let's look at it next to the 8015. Pretty good comparison for a folder versus fixed blade because that is basically a fixed blade once she's out and about. But then we're gonna get a little more tame with the paramilitary too. And uh, how about the Benchmade 940-2? Oh, and heck, last one, swear to God. Cold Steel Recon 1, which is a bit of a beast compared to the Pterosaur. And there's the Manix 2, which is my favorite all-time EDC at this moment. All right, so table's cleared. Uh, Condor Pterosaur out on the table. I've got to say, I think this is going to be a good one. And I have so many freaking fixed plays to try out now. You guys are probably getting sick of seeing these unboxing unboxings and looking forward to some reviews. Let me tell you, the ordering is just about done. My stockpile, my inventory is pretty much where I wanted it to be to be able to start a lot of the videos I'm looking forward to making. So keep an eye out. I've got a little bit of time off work coming up here and I'm gonna get some reviews and some different videos that I owe. Keep an eye out for those and keep an eye out for the Condor Pterosaur review when the time comes because this is gonna be something I'll be playing around with. I am going to be doing a little bit of a overnight hike bush expedition here at some point as it gets a little bit colder give myself a fun little uh, pre-military challenge for this would be a pretty good knife to test out on that between that and the garberg 
one of them will definitely be on my hip. And I'll make sure I try and get some good footage of some uh, my attempt at bushcraft, which I'm not an expert in anything bushcraft or wilderness survival or anything of that sort. I've got some experience in the bush and around people that have got more experience than myself who I've learned a lot from. I'm just trying to get better at all kinds of random useful life skills and I, uh, bushcraft is definitely one that I could use some work on. Firecraft, not an easy thing. I need to get myself uh, some practice and maybe do a little bit of recording of me attempting some uh, legit bushcraft fires in less than dry conditions because on the east coast of Canada we do not have bone dry fuel available unless it's pretty much like that of summer. So if those videos aren't around and you need something to look at in the meantime, why don't you check out the unboxings for like Cold Steel SRK or the Cold Steel AD15 or all kinds of other sweet knives out on the table that you've seen today. There'll be a playlist or a suggestion or two over to the right of your screen. And for now, if you don't mind giving the video a like, I definitely appreciate it. it. Gets the content out to more knife viewers and I appreciate all of your viewership your comments, all of your suggestions. Thanks again, Budget Guy for Knives and Tools, and I will be seeing you folks on the next one. This is the Hard on Gear channel, signing off.